Hello and welcome to section four of the beach walk blanket pattern. This is a very messy looking thing, a bit of a like a caterpillar on a stick. This is my yarn kebab. This round is going to be using um, a whole lot of what are called mini grannies. And basically a mini granny is very simply just the first round of one of the granny squares. So it's just round one and then finished off. Now, the reason why it's looking a little bit messy here is that <clears throat> it's it's not essential, but it's been my practice over the years when I've been working with these to finish off the starting tail, the one that you pull tight to close up the hole in the middle, finish that off neatly and trim it, but leave the outside tail for the moment. Now, the reason I leave the outside tail, and I haven't in this one, I've tidied it up, and this one actually looks quite um, neat and tidy. But sometimes when you stitch in the outside tail, especially on something as small as this, it can close up, just depending on how you do it, it can sometimes close up the stitches and make it difficult to see where your corners are, especially when it's so small. So my tendency is to leave them and then stitch them in when they're worked into the blanket. Now, that's only my personal preference. And if you would rather tidy them up and have them all stitched in, I'm sure it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. I've just left mine and that's why it's looking messy. No apologies. It's just that's the way it is. So you have got, I can't remember exactly how many you've got to make, um, but they're all made and stored on my knitting needle, which is why I call it a yarn kebab. I've stored them in the order that they're going to be attached with the very last one put onto the knitting needle first, just pushed through the middle. Um, the last one put onto the knitting needle and then each one in order until this one, the first one that you'll pull off, will be the first one that you'll attach to the blanket. So I'm just going to run through making a mini granny, first of all, and then you can go ahead and make up all the ones that you need in all the colours according to the pattern and put them on your knitting needle or whatever method you want to store them. So we're just going to make our uh, starting um, slip stitch onto the hook, slip knot, chain one, two, three, four, and then slip stitch into the first chain to make a loop. This will all be second nature to you now because you've made so many granny squares. Chain two, and then two treble stitches into the center. Chain two and two treble stitches, three, sorry, treble stitches into the center. Chain two, three more treble stitches. Chain two, and this is the last group. One, two, three treble stitches. Just double check that you've got one, two, three, four um, sides. Chain two, and then slip stitch into the top of your first chain two, and snip your yarn. So that is a mini granny and as I say you can pull up your um, end in the, the middle and thread it onto your needle and sew it in. They are going to be made wrong side up so they're going to be attached to the blanket looking like this so in that case you want to pull that end through to this side and stitch it in nice and firmly and then I'll leave it to you whether you decide to stitch this one in or 
leave it for when you've got it attached to the blanket. Um, again, yes, definitely, it's your choice. I don't think it makes a lot of difference and I'm just too much of an old dog, that, you know, new old dog, new tricks. I just have always left this tail. Right, so your job now is to go ahead, make up all your um, little mini grannies and come back when you've got them all ready and I'll have the next part of the video ready to show you how to attach them to the blanket. So I'll see you shortly. And this is the blanket turned back over to the front again. So you can tell uh, because of the join as you go, the ridge of the join as you go is always on the front and that's no different for joining the mini grannies. So although we did this round section three, the grey granny clusters on the wrong side, I've turned the blanket back over again and this is the way we'll be joining section four. It doesn't matter which corner you start in. We're going to be starting in a corner of the blanket. Let me get that right into position. There we go. So that's fine. And we're going to be starting in a corner. And uh, as I say, it doesn't matter which corner. So we take our very first one. This particular one has both ends sewn in because I had already attached it and then pulled it back out. And that's why it does look a bit strange with the larger holes, but that's because it's been in and out again. Okay, so this is square number one and I'll just bring my joining colour in. And this is the same colour as the section three round, which is the grey. Um, and we just need to make sure that the square is on its wrong side. And we, we do all the squares on the wrong side, attaching to the right side of the blanket. I'm going to attach my yarn as usual. And we're working with half treble stitch again. All the joining stitches in the blanket are done in half trebles. Chain two equivalent of the first half treble and then two half trebles in that corner. This is just exactly the same way as you joined the round the, the round of squares for section two, but it's just a little bit smaller and therefore sometimes people find it um, a bit confusing. So that's why we're going to try and make it as simple as possible. Right, so we have done ch chain two, two trebles. And then I'm going to go into the next corner. Not trebles, half trebles. One, two, three half trebles in the next corner. And now we're ready to start attaching it to the blanket itself. And I'm just going to, let me just get some more of that yarn. I'm just going to put my hook into the corner and make a slip stitch. So you just pull the yarn through and through the loop on the hook. And that's the first point of attachment for these grannies. Yarn over and finish that corner with three half trebles. One, two, three. So there you see the first corner attached to the blanket. Now, where this loop is lying on my hook, it's right beside the next space in the blanket and we're going to slip stitch in there to attach it for the second time. And then, just like before, slip stitch one side, treble cluster or half treble cluster on the other side, we're going to the corner to make three half trebles. One, two, three. There you can see. So we do have an extra um, slip stitch in the middle. And then next space along and slip stitch. This is in effect just round two of the uh, 
mini granny rather than if you think of round one being the mini granny and round two is the joining colour. Right, I'm just swinging this round. You will find that it's easier to keep moving your blanket and, and actually I find it really good when I'm doing my joining stitch to work on a table because it keeps everything quite easy to see and quite flat. Okay, so I've done half of that corner and, I'm, and I've done my slip stitch, so I'm just going to put in three more half trebles. And then down to the corner and three half trebles, two, three. And like before, we're going to leave this edge unworked just now. We'll do that all the way round afterwards. So it's time to start the next colour. And next one is the tomato. Turn it onto its wrong side. And again, this is one where both tails have been sewn in, but um, it was pulled back. I didn't, I was actually did this the, last night, but I didn't feel that the light was good enough. So I'm redoing it today. Into, we've done our first three half trebles. Now, because we've gone round this with the next round, if you like, of the granny square, we do have a space now, like we had in the blanket. So I can go in, make a slip stitch and attach it to its neighbour. And then up to the corner and three half trebles. One, two, three. And that's half of my tomato corner done. And now I am suggesting that in this case we have a point that we share. We share this space here with my the previous square and you're going to put uh, a slip stitch in there. But I have found from experience that two slip stitches side by side in the space can have a tendency to pull apart a little bit and make a big gap uh, when you've got your little minis joined. And to avoid that, I'm suggesting that you make two slip stitches in this corner. I'm going to slip stitch first of all, into the corner of the previous square, like that, and then also into the same space in the blanket. And that just holds everything a little bit more firmly. And then one, two, three for the last three Plus the last three stitches in that corner. Again, we've got a space, so we slip stitch into the next space along in the blanket, and then three half trebles as usual in this corner. One, two, three. So, really, that's pretty much all we need to do at this stage slip stitch into the the blanket and then turn. I'm going to make one more to take you past the join in the blanket between the square. So one, I'll speed up just a little bit, two, three, and one, two, three, a bit of a squeaky hoop today. Right. So we've got now got two joined and I'll take the next one, which is the Parma Violet. And this one is going to just join in exactly the same way. But I just want to mention this bit here when we're working over it so that you don't get um, troubled by it. So I'm going to start this one. One, two, three. and slip stitch and one, 
two, three. Um, don't worry too much about it. it. I am making it look just a little bit awkward for working and that's because I'm trying to make everything as um, flat and clear for you to see. You'll probably be able to handle it better. Right, so one slip stitch into the previous square corner and slip stitch into the blanket. And then one, two, three. Slip stitch into the next space along in the blanket. And then just tuck that tail out of the way. One, two, three. And we're just at this point now where we did the decreasing stitch over the join of the um, squares. And all I want to say about that is remember that that is one stitch or one cluster. It's not two clusters. It's just the one. So you're not going to go into this, anything like that. There's no space there. You're going straight over to the next space in the blanket like that. I'll just come down and then I'll stop. So it's one, two, three, and then down to the bottom. One, two, three. And that is the first three squares of your mini granny section attached. And it's all looking nice and flat. The beauty of these little squares, of course, is the fact that they are small and give you a different dimension to the bigger squares. It just adds a lot more interest to the blanket. So what I'm going to do now is work all the way along until I get to this corner and I'll take I'll come back and take you around the corner and then I'll work all the way around and show you what happens when we get to the bottom edge. So I'll see you in a few minutes when I get to this point. That didn't take long and I have got right the way along this uh, row apart from the last one and that is it going into the space. You should have one, two, three, well counting this, the one that we share with the previous square, one, two, three spaces left. If by any chance you don't have that, uh, which would maybe mean that you would either be too short or too um, long with here with this round then the answer is quite simply that you have miscounted somewhere you have maybe missed out one of the spaces in the blanket I think that's most likely to be the problem you've maybe jumped over one and then you have ended up being out with your count so if you don't have one two and the third shared one left on your row then look back and just check carefully and i'm sure you will find where the problem lies just means that you've got to pull it back but take a deep breath and do that it's not it's not the end of the world but let's hope that everything has worked out fine for you and you have the right number of spaces so we're just going to put this last one in just in exactly the same way one two three borrow the corner space from the previous square and also the space in the blanket you'll be quite familiar with that now and then finish off hopefully i'm in in camera uh hope Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. One, two, three in the corner. And then the second last space on the blanket. One, two, three in the corner of the mini. And the very last corner space on the blanket. I'll just swing that round and finish this off one two three and then down to the
the corner. One, two, three. Right, so now I'm going to swing this round because we're ready to start this second side. And I'm going to take my next square mini and it will stick out obviously from the um, the end because we have to create the this side. So I'm going to just work away. There's nothing different to do here. Make sure it's on the wrong side and three as usual. Slip stitch and three. And then into the previous square and then into the corner. It's a bit belt and brace is putting in these two um, slip stitches, but I think it's worth it. Now, the next thing we need to do is work down this side of this square. One, two, three and then down to the bottom, one, two, three. Now don't be tempted to go along uh, the other side because uh, you know how you did three sides on all of these. When you come to the corner one, you only do two sides. You leave the two outside edges empty just now. So it's just the two sides that you work, otherwise you won't be able to go any further. And we'll take the next little square and that so happens we're back to the storm blue. So as you can see, all the colours will fit in the same way along each side. So the tomato and so on. So we'll just, I'll just continue. I'll work all the way around and I'll see you back at the square where we started. Here we are back at the point where we started. That was the very first one that I attached and I've done all four sides of the mini grannies. It's taken me a little bit longer than I had intended because I had a surprise visitor this afternoon and um, I had to go and make a cup of tea and socialise for a little while. But now I am back and I have got it finished. And if you remember when we did this one here, this round, when you've done all of your um, squares and got them all attached, then what we need to do is just start to work back around the outside edge all the way in a backwards fashion until we get to this point again. So it's just exactly the same as round two, section two where you're going to finish off. I've done the first three half trebles of this corner and I'm going to put in the next three. So that completes that corner. One, two, three. And then we just march uh, back around. Now this is a part, I think I mentioned it before, this is a part that um, can sometimes be forgotten because you've got, you've done the chore of adding all your squares onto the blanket and you can sometimes forget that they need to be outlined with the last part of the join as you go before you move on to the next bit. And of course that throws out the um, count for the rest of the blanket. So do make a point of remembering that you need to finish this part off. And <clears throat> I'm just going around this outside corner. I don't have a lot of this grey left, so it's not going to get me all the way around, but I have more coming, so we should be okay. Now, because we have, uh, you know, much smaller squares, these funny little joins between them 
come almost at every, well, they do come at every point. You don't have any space in between. So do you remember that what we do is we have to do the three trebles, uh, half trebles in the first corner and then chain one and slip stitch into the gap between the join, chain one again and three half trebles. And that uh, gives you a nice, neat join. And there you can see what I mean. So it's that at every point all the way around, because as I say, there are no spaces in between. So again, it's three half trebles. Chain one, slip stitch into the middle space, chain one and three half trebles. And that's, you'll get into the rhythm and you'll march round this edge without any problem, I'm sure. And of course, it's three half trebles, chain two, three half trebles in every outside corner. Now, I haven't done anything about these ends as yet. I'm waiting until I've done this outside edge and then as soon as that's finished I will tackle these ends in the back and then we can move on to the next section. So I'll pop back once we're finished this section ready to start the next one and we're moving on quickly. So I'll see you later. Bye for now.